The uh, application wise, again, residentially is very easy. Like I said, the G100 is a one bath house, the 145 is two and a half, the 195 up to five fixtures, then the 195M is for anything above that. If you ever have any questions about application, just come talk to Bill. He'll steer you in the right direction, okay? Uh, or if Bill can't answer the question for whatever reason, he get a hold of us, or you can call us as well. Uh, anything application-wise will help you with. We give you basic piping schematics that show you if you want research going in there, how it should be piped, okay? That's all on there. Uh, they're all in the manual, these basic ones. This is our piping schematic for radium floor heat. Bill has one he drew himself, very similar to this, and it works, works just fine. Uh, as long as you can control that delta T. So if you ever have a question about this, please, please, please see Bill and talk to him. All right, he'll steer you in the right direction. And if it's not gonna work, he'll tell you it's not gonna work. One thing about Eternal that really surprises people, I've done a lot of job sites where I've told people nothing. Commercial job sites. I was in Ohio two weeks ago, and I went to this place called Harshside Foods. The sales guy for McDonald's Supply was so excited because he had a chance to sell 50 Eternals in this building. And I said, no, no, no. That wasn't even commercial, that was industrial. They needed 180 degrees, they wanted to take, they wanted to put two Eternals in the wall to replace four 120 gallon commercial water heaters. It wasn't gonna work. We get in the car and the guy says, you're killing me. I could have sold 50 units. I said, yeah, and you would be replacing 45 of them in a year. Nobody needs that. You guys don't need that aggravation. We don't need the aggravation. Here's the wholesale house. If it's not gonna work, we're gonna tell you it's not gonna work. I'd rather lose the sale than have the machine fail in a year. That's actually mine in my house. You'll see I take my Mega Barrier from the basement, which is fine. My basement's wide open, 28 by 30. Uh, so I take it from the basement. If you take it from the basement, put a snorkel on it. It doesn't change the way it runs, but if you don't put the snorkel and someone takes a book and sets it on top of the machine, now you have no fresh air going back, you're gonna have lockout codes and they're gonna call you back and say the machine won't work. Okay. Commercial, anything commercially, get us involved, period. If you wanna do a restaurant, if you wanna do a hotel, any big job, get us involved. If you get us involved and we give you the piping schematic and you follow 100% to our sizing and it doesn't work, we pay to fix it. We guarantee that sizing 100%. Anything we do commercially now is gonna have storage, it's gonna have. Restaurants and on-demand water heaters don't work, they just don't. The water is used too harshly in a restaurant. It's all quick bursts of water, on and off, higher water temperatures, big draws. Yes, just get what is in the kitchen and submit that to us, and they tell you what you have to have a sizing. Okay. When it, any kind of commercial vacation, all they want to know is how many three base sinks, how many two base sinks, what's the model number of the dishwasher, so we can see what the flow rates of the dishwasher is. Is there a pre sprayer? How many labs are there? That's what they're going to do, just a fixture count. They're going to base that based on the water temperature you want and the delta T that you have. They're going to base that sizing on there. It might be one unit in a 50-gallon storage tank. It might be two units in an 80-gallon storage tank. It might be four units in a 119-gallon storage tank. It all depends on the size of the facility and how much water you're pulling out through this. Okay? Um, this will look like, the basic one will look like this. We really want that to be a four-port storage tank. Don't take an old electric water heater and pull the elements out of it and try to use it as a storage tank. It doesn't work. Okay? The problem with that is this. A true storage tank will have two fittings in the bottom like this. Okay? Sorry, I couldn't find a good picture of the Bradford White one, Bill, so I, I put it up here for you. But You want to have two fittings like this for the circulation of it. Even this tank, which is the, which is the collecty one, is a nice tank, but if you recirc it out of the bottom and back into the top, it's too high. If the draw out of the tank ever exceeded what the pump could pull, you'd just pull in the tank and out the tank. You wouldn't be heating the mass inside the tank. So you want to have a tank that's going to circulate the water. Cold water in the bottom, okay? Circulate here, hot water at the top. It's going, to get the, it's going to get the best for your recirculation and the best recovery of that tank itself. Uh -huh. There's a small restaurant. There's, a, there's one unit in a 50-gallon four-port tank. This is a typical drawing right here. Now, the drawings we said you will be a CAD drawing, just like Bill does. All the pipe size will be on there, what you've got to have for pump size, all that kind of stuff will be on it. This is a colored drawing to kind of give you an idea. This is an 80-gallon storage tank, two 195 machines. Now, based upon the size of the copper and the size of the pump is what it's going to give you for recovery. Think about it in terms of this. If I come out of this tank with an inch and a half copper, and I size that pump right, so it's a minimum of 10 gallons a minute at 20, 25 feet ahead. When I get to a 30 degree delta T between here and here, I could be pulling 16 gallons a minute out of this one, and 16 gallons a minute out of this one, and taking that heated water back to that tank. So if I'm putting 32 gallons a minute of recovery back there, and only pulling 12 gallons a minute out, you have a pretty good idea of what we can do for recovery. Restaurants are always important to have redundancies. That's why most of these have two units 80 gallon storage tank. One would actually heat that tank, but a restaurant cannot be without hot water. If one machine goes down, you can shut it off and you still have hot water. I also have piping schematics where guys pipe in bypasses. So that if the tank goes bad, you can shut off two ball valves, 
open two ball valves and still have hot water through the machines. It's not optimal, it's not going to work perfect, but it gets them by. Are you using the uh, M series with this? No. You can, but we don't want them to cycle. We want the pump to turn both on instantly as okay. soon as the flow happens. Yeah. A lot of guys have put M's in in the past, and they work okay. They're fine because if the pump's big enough, it's going to cycle them on fast anyway. Yeah. But the, the S's come on quickly as soon as the pump fires them on. Yeah, okay, because you've got to remember, if, if you shut the number five dip switch off, now they work off flow. So that means you need a, you need a half a gallon turn on that one and a half a gallon turn on that one. So now you need a gallon yeah. to make them both activate. Right. But the pump's going to take care of that. In this application, if you wanted 140 out of that tank, the aquastat would be set for 140, the machines would be set for 160. Okay? That's why we can't go higher temperatures. If you need 160, I don't want to set at 180. And if you need 180, I can't go above 180. So I can't give you any delta T on that machine. Anything commercially, like I said, just get us involved and we'll help you. It's uh, Let us design it and it'll take care of any problems that way. A little quick piece about the warranty. 15 year no leak warranty residentially and is not prorated. That means if this machine springs a leak in 14 years and 9 months, they get a brand new machine for free. They don't keep putting, adding a price to it as it gets older and older. Okay? Any water leak inside this vessel is going to change out the machine. We don't sell the heat exchangers apart. You're never going to change a heat exchanger in our machine, ever. Okay? Uh, you guys ever change a heat exchanger in our Renai, Takagi, or Naritz? No? I have. It's 4 hours and 9 band-aids and you'll have it done. Okay? It's a bitch. Um, <laughs> So you're never going to change. You're never going to change ours. Okay. It's, we, if it leaks, we replace it. If the water pressure switch fails, we replace the machine. If you have O-rings leak and spray water inside a box, we replace the machine. Okay. We're not going to mess with telling somebody who now has it totally drenched inside of the machine. Say, well, let's just change the board, the gas valve, the fan. You'll be all right. Because now the holes inside of that machine have been compromised. We don't play those games. If it leaks, we replace it. Three years in the parts out of the box. As long as the homeowner registers a serial number online, they get the full five years in the parts. So it's important to tell your customer that. In the bag with the installation manual is a form. Fill at the bottom with your information, hand it to the homeowner. They've got to go online, it takes five minutes. They have to do it? You can do it for them if you wanted to, absolutely. If you want to provide that service, you can. If your homeowner doesn't have internet, they can call and do the same thing. Okay, so like, you know, you might think that'd be crazy this time of the this time in our lifespan not to have internet anymore, but I'll tell you, I've been to some places in Kentucky, they're lucky they have power. Right. Okay? Uh, but they do have phones, so they can call that way. Labor allowance. Now listen, it's very important the labor part is so you guys understand this. The labor is only for the first year. And it's only on a parts change or a unit change. You're not going to pay for service calls and that kind of thing. So if you have to change a part in the first year, we give you the part, we give you 150 bucks to change the part. If you've got to change the machine out in the first year, we give you the machine, we give you 300 bucks to change out the machine. After that first year is done, they'll still have four years left in the parts and portion is left on them, on them heated, no leak, but they'll have to pay you to go back and take care of it. Okay? If you have to get, a, if you have to get a, a work order, this is what they'll send you from Grand Hall. They'll email it to you or they can mail it to you if you don't have internet for whatever reason. <laughs> Fill it out, follow the instructions, send it back. It's usually 21 days from the time we receive it for AP to cut the check and send it back to you. Okay? Lastly, unauthorized returns. This is important. This is important for you guys to understand. It's also important so you, the whole house is protected as well. You absolutely have the right to pull any of our machines off the wall. You sold it to that customer, you can pull it off the wall. Don't ever let it get to that point, okay? If you've got to go back for a second time for the same service call, pick up the phone. There's way too many resources at your, at your, at your, uh, what's this, somebody give me a word? At your, uh, thank you, Bella, just bowls, thank you very much. Um, to, to not have that taken care of that. You've got Bill here who can help you. Uh, you've got Jim from the rep agency who can help you. You've got a 1866 number furnace machine that can help you. Don't ever let it get to that point. Because here's what happens. You rip it off the wall without permission. You bring it back here. Bill's got to send it back to Grand Hall on his dime. We test it. If it could not have been fixed in the field, wonderful. We credit Bill. Bill credits you. Everybody goes on their merry way. If it could have been fixed in the field, we can either fix it for you, recertify it for you, which there's a charge for, but if we recertify, there's a warranty, and we mail it back to you. If you don't want to recertify, we mail it back to you, and now you own two. Okay, so don't let it get to that point. Don't put yourself in that position. Don't put Bill in that position. Don't put us in that position. Any of the 15 texts in that phone can give you permission to take that machine off the wall. And once the permission is given, it's very easy. The RMA goes to Bill, he sends us a serial number, the credit goes to Bill, and everybody is happy. So don't let it get to that point. One last thing about warranty. If a customer calls you and says they bought a unit online, can you install it for me? Tell them you can install it, but remind them they have no warranty. No no leak, no parts, no labor, period. Anything sold online, we do not cover any warranty. It's written right in our installation manual in the warranty. That is the only way we can protect everybody sitting in this room. 
and Eternal tracks every serial number. And if you don't think you're serious about it, when I first started here, we had a company in California that sold 450 to 500 machines a year out of three locations. Eternal caught them three times selling out of territory and pulled the line from them. Okay, they're pretty serious about it. Um, you know, we know that the way this product grows is with a guy sitting right in this room. That's how this product grows. It's the contrary to build a line. We don't build it. Bill and his company obviously help, but you guys installing is what builds this line. That's what does it. We gotta try to protect you guys. So anything sold online, no warranty. Just let your customers know that. You can't stop all of it. You can find them on eBay, you can find them on Amazon, you can't stop that. But they gotta know they have no warranty going forward. Okay, make sense? All right, 